So far, most of the maps that have been revealed in Battlefield 1's In the Name of the Tsar DLC have been focused around infantry gameplay. Now, the Eastern Front in World War 1 wasn't as densely populated with vehicles as the Western Front was when the tanks arrived, and the Russians, they didn't even field their own tank during the First World War. Lupkow Pass, Brusilov Keep, Volga River and Tsaritsyn, they're all focused on infantry gameplay, some of those maps more than others. But Albion, another map we've already seen, and Galicia, this map that we're looking at today, I would say they are proper all-out warfare maps. Albion brought in amphibious combat with boats, whereas Galicia focuses on ground vehicles and aerial combat. That's not to say, though, that infantry can't have some impact. There is plenty going on on this map for them. But onto this brand new map called Galicia. It's a fairly large, flat map, with its main point being to showcase the more open warfare that the Eastern Front was known for. Some rudimentary, basic, but deep trenches have been dug across the large open fields in the centre of the map, which are broken up only, really, by some destructible windmills, which can make for some good infantry cover, providing vehicles don't know you're there. You could look out little windows with your sniper rifle and snipe people down in the trenches. It is pretty cool. There are five flags on this map, stretching across the open fields from the Russian HQ to the west of the map, all the way to the Austro-Hungarian spawn in the east of the map. A large shallow river cuts through the eastern side of the map first of all, and then it loops round onto the western side, and that gives both armies a small amount of natural cover. The banks are very shallow, however, and most of the time you'll just end up using the river as sort of a pathway between your gimme flag and the ones closer to the centre of the map. Now the E flag, that's the gimme flag on the Russian side of the map, that includes like a small compound, and then the A flag over the other side by the Austro-Hungarian spawn, that's kind of like this makeshift stockpile location, and there's an AA gun there for attacking enemy planes. I didn't manage to see another AA gun on the map, but most of the time action sort of focuses around the middle. The B flag that sits on the Austro-Hungarian side of the map is actually in the riverbed, and it's extremely open. Ground vehicles like the Putilov Garford truck and planes will find it fairly easy to pick off infantry here, but with some of the new weapons, DICE is trying to teach infantry that you can use them against planes. The new MG14 comes with a bipod and an extremely high rate of fire, and that's perfect for drilling some bullets through those wooden fuselages. And of course, we already know plenty of people like to play assault, so there's lots of explosives going off on those ground vehicles. The C flag is the central flag on this map, although it sits fairly far to the north, quite near the boundary. It's called Trainwreck, and as you might expect, it includes a wrecked train. This location again is fairly flat, but there's some good solid cover here this time, which means vehicles can use it as cover, although planes will still have a very easy time spotting things down on the ground. The D flag is closer to the Russian army spawn, and it is literally a trench. It stretches across the width of one of the fields, and it has two open points, one at each end. And the trench connecting the two is also part of the capture radius, which means if you want to take that flag, and the Russians are holding on to it, you, as the Austro-Hungarians, essentially need to go over the top of one of the trenches in the field and push right into their capture zone. I think DICE did this on Nivelle Knights as well, and they've kind of carried that idea over. It does feel pretty cool. I've played the new game mode as well, called Supply Drop on this map, and it plays fairly well, but due to the open nature of it, if the crate drops in the middle of the field, then it can be quite hard to capture it for your team, and you'll spend a lot of time sort of sitting in the trenches or laying prone in the field, trying to kill people and not being sniped by scouts who are sitting on the edges of the map. I'll be making a separate video on the game mode soon, so watch out for it. But overall, to give you my impressions, it's not really a mode that I'll be playing much of. I prefer the linear game modes like Frontlines and Operations, and Supply Drop just doesn't really offer that kind of combat. Now the map, as I've said, it incorporates all the different types of combat perhaps more seasoned Battlefield players would have come to expect from a Battlefield game. Ground forces mixed with armour and aerial vehicles all combined into this sort of melting pot of chaos. Battlefield 1 hasn't really done enough of that, 
for vehicle players so far, and most of the maps are really suiting this infantry combat style. Uh, even the French DLC, it featured two maps that didn't have any vehicles at all, so it's nice to see DICE changing direction slightly and adding in some more vehicle focus maps. This, Galicia and Albion are the ones in the Russian DLC that vehicle players are going to enjoy the most, but Volga River and Tsaritsyn do include some ground vehicles that you can use as well, although I think it's only one per map. Both of those maps are the Russian Civil War maps, where you play as either the White Guard or the Red Army, and both of those maps lean more towards infantry gameplay, with tanks sort of coming in to break up the combat and move the combat around the map a little bit. It's a nice mechanic, but if you want some proper vehicle warfare, then Galicia and Albion are your best bets. But there you go, that's your first look at Galicia. Now this map will also be part of the Brusilov offensive operation, in the Russian DLC together with Brusilov Keep. So you'll get this mix of open warfare with lots of vehicles and then moving on to urban warfare, focusing more on infantry. But overall, I really like the Galicia map and I enjoyed playing it at Gamescom. I did only play two rounds on it though, so I'm sure my opinion will change a little bit when I get into some public matches and I've played some more rounds. Let me know what you think of it down below in the comments section, and as always, I'll be down there reading as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.